Today, we want to talk about API testing. We want to talk about how you can automate the process of securing your APIs. So let's begin by first talking a little bit about what kind of uh, methods are already there and where is um, fast testing in, in this case. So usually when, when you want to test your um, API, uh, your APIs, uh, you can have some API testing tools like RESTler um, or maybe even Burp or OWASP ZEP. While RESTler is already quite automated, it is still a black box tool. So it actually does not use code coverage as a, a means to, to find new or yeah, to create new test cases. Um, and at the same time, tools like Burp or OWASP, they are also black box tool. They don't take the source code into account and they also require more manual effort. They need to be guided um, a little bit more manually than RESTler. Then you maybe also have some tools that actually take the, the source code into account. So um, uh, I think uh, most people that actually think about API testing, they also already do unit testing. Um, so in this example here, we have our typical microservice architecture, which is the common case nowadays. So nowadays you usually don't have like one big service um, that does everything, all the functionality, uh, but you rather have um, multiple services that each have li are like a logical unit. So each service is um, responsible for doing specific tasks. And this also means that these services most likely will talk to each other. Maybe if uh, a user sends a request to the service on the left, uh, in the background, this service will talk to the other two services before returning a response. And when you write unit tests, um, they usually just test uh, individual services. So for example, you have some unit tests uh, to test this left um, service here. Um, and these unit tests then need to, to mock the other services um, in, in a meaningful way so that you just simulate how these other services would behave in the real world. And, and this is uh, usually a good way for unit testing, uh, but it can be a little bit difficult if the other services, for example, they change their behavior, but you don't change your unit test, uh, then you have, have a gap between the real world and uh, the assumptions in your unit test. And this, of course, can, can lead to new bugs. Um, so these are like unit tests that use the source code um, for testing, then of course you can also do some code review, maybe some static code analyzers that will analyze your code um, for potential vulnerabilities, potential problems, potential bugs uh, in your code. These testing methods, they have uh, some common challenges. Um, so for example, testing all possible parameter combinations is, is very hard. Um, it's, it's difficult for, for automated tools. It's super difficult for, for manual tools like Burp. Um, and um, even for unit tests, testing everything is it's really hard. It really depends on the Im imagination of the one who writes this unit test. Um, also ensuring and maximizing the test effectiveness is very difficult when you talk about black box tools. So uh, in the end, when you've done a manual test uh, using Burp or Wasp Zap, um, you cannot be 100% sure, sure how much um, functionality of your application did you really test. So how much of your code was actually executed during your tests. And then also uh, talking about the unit tests where you need to mock the other services, um, it can be very, very difficult actually to, to mock these services in a meaningful manner. And in the end, we of course want to automate this process. So we don't want to um, uh, do a lot of this manually and we want uh, in the best case with each iteration in our software with each new version, we would like to have a, an automated test that can, can find regression bugs, that can find new bugs. And um, in the best case, we want this integrated in our CI CD pipeline. Um, but this can with um, a lot of these tools can be uh, still quite difficult to integrate this in an automated CI CD process. 